Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at this uh, PTO driven post hole digger or auger, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, power takeoff driven off the back of the tractor. Um, this is going to be just basic information, uh, a little bit of maintenance um, information on these things. So um, to start off with, um, uh, this one here, I couldn't tell you what the brand name is. I think it's some kind of like Omni Gear or something like that. It's a generic name. Um, they have interchangeable parts between the different brands. So don't get hung up on what brand you have. If you're worried about changing your auger, uh, for instance, this is a brand new six inch auger that I just put on here today. I'm gonna be drilling some six inch holes and I had to remove the 12 inch auger to mount it up. The, uh, the input shaft size, the diameter of this shaft on a lot of them, they cl they'll call it a two inch, um, but typically, like this one, when I put a uh, uh, measuring tape on it, it was like two and an eighth or two and a sixteenth. So it's just a fuzz over two inch. Um, and I couldn't, again, I don't know if that's the original one that came with this unit, uh, but I purchased that one at Tractor Supply. It's just a generic, it's listed as a two inch auger. Um, when you do change these out, you want to be certain that the hardware you use, this bolt, is no harder than grade five. I don't think I've ever seen any kind of recommendation for anything harder than a grade five. This, don't consider this a bolt so much as a shear pin. Um, if you are using this and you're digging in the ground and you catch a rock or something and this seizes, you know, against that rock and that PTO shaft is gonna keep turning, you know, and something's gotta give. So rather than breaking your PTO shaft or the drive in your tractor, or the gearbox on the auger, this is meant to shear. So don't ever use anything harder than grade five. I typically use grade two. Um, now a lot of these things, and this one included, they've got two uh, sets of through bolts here. So like this, this is bolted on through the, the gear shaft. Um, and I could run another bolt through here. I'm not gonna. Um, I'd rather play it safe than sorry. I'd rather break a few shear pins than uh, you know risk damaging the unit so um, don't ever the main takeaway from this is either use grade two or grade five the cheapest bolts are typically the softest bolts so uh, keep that in mind um, also when you're uh, you know when you're hooking these things up you want to always always before you you before you use it check the oil in the head unit here i guess that's what you want to call it or the gearbox whatever to do that, um, now to, to check this one, I pull the plug here, and that for some reason takes an Allen head, a lot of them do. Um, pull the plug, I've got the unit as level as I can get it, and check the amount of fluid in it. If it needs fluid, you'll fill it up here, and you'll use, 80, use a generic 80W, 90W gear oil, or um, you could use like a 140 weight, um, if you don't know, you know, what the manufacturer recommends, you're kind of always safe to use an 80, 90 weight. Um, but you'll fill it up until it comes out this hole. Don't fill it all the way up to this hole. Only fill it up till it comes out this hole. And uh, as far as other lubrication on this thing, there are two U-joints. They're hidden back behind this guard, and the guard is in poor condition. But um, this is a U-joint here. There's a grease fitting or grease zerk up in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Um, so you want to make sure you grease that grease fitting uh, up there. There's also a grease fitting on the guard and that allows the, the guard to rotate independently or actually the guard shouldn't really rotate, um, but the PTO shaft should spin inside the guard and that's just for safety, you know, so somebody doesn't get tangled up in the guard. And there's the same thing going on down there. There's a U-joint on the PTO shaft itself and then there's also a grease fitting on the outside these the the fitting on the universal joint and this fitting here do two separate things so make sure when you're greasing this thing up you want to grease it up every time you use it every day you're going to use it don't just grease up these these ones on the plastic on the outside because that's all that all that's doing is working the guard you really want to focus on the grease fittings on the actual shaft so don't lose sight of that um that is, as far as lubrication, that's about it on these things. Um, as long as you've got good, you know, good amount of gear oil, you've greased your fittings up, 
Um, if you want to kind of get carried away, and I do a lot of times, anywhere that metal rubs on metal, I'll give it a score to WD-40. So like on my, uh, just anywhere, you know, all these uh, uh, spots here. Now you can put, you could smear grease in there, but what happens is this thing is going to generate some dust and it's going to be a dusty, dirty environment. And if you go putting grease on all these tight tolerance pl places like this, uh, dirt is going to accumulate in there and kind of bind up over time. So uh, really you want to use kind of a light oil, maybe like an old motor oil or something like that. Uh, also on the, the PTO connector, this one has a, the, uh, like a collar that you spin. Um, you want to make sure also use something light, a light oil in there. Don't use grease in there because these things are, when they're hard enough to connect anyhow and if you got to fight a bunch of grease and dirt it's going to make it harder on you so um and and again we talked about the augers you can change augers you know this happens to be a six inch you could use a six inch a nine inch a 12 inch i'd say you can go as big as you want uh depending on the tractor and what your gearbox will handle so you may you know i could put like a 24 inch auger on here but i may end up just shearing bolts off um, or shear pins off i could do some damage to the tractor i mean i don't know in in my circumstance you know just doing fence posts and stuff like that i really can't see any reason to go bigger than 12 inch um, so anyhow there's that i'm not going to get into the operation of this thing that's a whole other animal all by itself uh, you want to be extremely careful around this thing though because you could get yourself or somebody else very very hurt very very quickly using this piece of machinery so uh, be very cautious around it. Um, don't ever let anybody come back here. You'll see it. Um, you'll see people doing it, you know, if you're around farms enough. You'll see one guy running the tractor and another guy standing back here. He's got his arm up here, and as this thing's going down, he's riding this, and he's, he's keeping it steady, and he's keeping it level and stuff. A lot of guys do it, and a lot of guys have done it for decades, and, you know, people don't get their arm ripped off every day, but people do get their arm ripped off doing that. You know, you can get get your leg tangled up in this. It gets caught on your jeans or something, or as this shaft goes down, you know, you'll you'll run this all the way down till it's in the dirt sometimes. And, you know, you've got the opportunity for this to spinning around to, to uh, catch on your pants or something. You could get yourself real bad hurt with this, so don't ever let anybody back here... Um, when you're when you're drilling be on the tractor but don't don't ever let anybody back here you know operating or helping to operate this thing in the back uh, as far as setting it up so that it does drill good and straight and you don't you don't want somebody back here um, you can see this pretty well straight up and down now when i first mounted it up today it wasn't and i had a different implement on the back here a few weeks ago and uh, when i had that implement on i had it i had a little bit of an angle back here so like when i originally hooked this up today this thing was leaning kind of leaning over i'm exaggerating it a little bit but it was it was kind of pushed over and uh it was not it was not vertical it was on an angle similar to that come over here and adjust the height one of your arms typically on the right hand side facing the rear of the tractor typically it's this side will have some sort of adjustment on it and you can see there's threads on that on that arm there. So I slide this up. This just happens to be a Kubota. I slide this up and I crank this, whichever way I, you know, crank it one way and it's gonna pivot the implement that way, crank it the other way and it's gonna pivot the implement that way. Uh, you're just lengthening or shortening that arm, which then puts a different, you know, amount of camber or whatever you wanna call it on the, on the implement. So, you know, help yourself by uh, getting it good and lined up when you first hook it up and you won't have you know that desire or that inclination to have somebody back here working the rear end of this thing so be safe with this thing guys if there's any questions i can answer for you leave them in the comments down below if you like this video click that thumbs up button if you want to see more videos like this click that subscribe button and until the next video keep on tinkering